Welcome everybody to this video where we discuss foundational image processing methods that are important for analyzing and transforming digital images. We can broadly categorize these image processing methods into point operations, image enhancements, geometric operations and spatial filtering. So let's go into detail with each of these categories. Point operations adjust pixel values independently of their neighbors relying only on the original pixel value. And these operations can either be homogeneous, which means that they apply the same function across all pixels, or non-homogeneous, where the function varies between different pixels. Examples of point operations include color inversion, contrast enhancement, but also selective brightness changes, for example. These operations are computationally simple and often used for image pre-processing. On the next few slides, you see a few such point operations and we start with brightness adjustment. We can achieve this by first converting RGB to youth and then modify the Y channel, which is the luminance channel representing brightness. For example, we can increase it by some absolute value and then convert it back to RGB. Saturation adjustment on the other side can be achieved by converting RGB to the HSV color space and then um, increase the saturation channel, for example, by 60% and convert back to RGP. Now, finally, the CPI effect, which you can see on this slide, can be achieved by converting from RGP to HSV and then fixing the hue value for every pixel. In this example, it would be 40 and then converting back to RGP. And this results in a nice vintage tone, as you can see here on the slide. As already mentioned, image enhancement focuses on improving the visual quality of an image. And an example for this would be histogram spreading, which enhances the contrast. So more specifically, histogram spreading adjusts the dynamic range of pixel intensities to the full spectrum of available colors. And this makes the image appear clearer and more vivid. It is achieved by finding the pins where the vast majority of pixel values are contained denoted here by hmin and hmax, and we subtract the minimum value from each pixel, divide it by the range between hmax and hmin, and multiply it with the maximum pixel value, which typically is 255. Geometric operations modify the spatial arrangement of an image through transformations such as translation, rotation, scaling, and also morphing. And it's important to understand that these transformations are usually irreversible, and depend on pixel neighborhoods. So for example, if you rotate an image by 40 degree and rotate it back later, there will be some lost information that we cannot recover. A common challenge with geometric operations is aligning the resulting image correctly with the pixel grid, which is often not fully possible as we can see here in the example on the slide. Now let's discuss spatial filtering, which adjusts pixel values based on their neighborhood often using a convolution with a kernel matrix. An example for this would be a linear blur, which is a simple average of the surrounding pixels, and this would result in a smoother image. It is important to understand here that we are talking about the computation of one single result pixel in each step, which is computed based on average pixel values in an input neighborhood. Like in this example, it is a neighborhood of three times three pixels, with the result pixel in the middle. And this averaging would then result in a smoother or more blurry image, as you can see from the example here in the slide. Another way to express such an operation would be with a kernel that includes the factors for all pixels in the input neighborhood, which we multiply with the pixel values in the neighborhood, as well as a scaling value for the resulting sum. In fact, the scaling value can be computed from all the factors, it is just the sum of the factors, and the matrix with the pixel values can be omitted for simplicity, so we end up only with the kernel. On the next slide, we can see the kernels of the boost filter, which is a contrast enhancement filter, and the kernel of Gaussian blur that is using an input of 5 times 5 here that results in a more blurry image than with the linear blur if we, if we would compare that. In fact, there are many such kernel-based filters. Other examples would be edge filtering, vertical edge filtering, or horizontal edge filtering, as you can see here on the slide. 
So for the second part in this video, let's talk about a very specific image processing method, namely dithering. Dithering has been used a lot by the media, for example, for newspapers, because it creates the impression of more colors or more intensities in an image by spatially redistributing pixel values. It is used in scenarios with limited resources, where we cannot increase both the resolution and the number of colors, so it's actually a trade-off where we sacrifice one for the other. For example, if we have an image with 256 gray values, but we can only use two colors, namely black and white, we could create the impression of more gray values by redistributing pixel values, or let's say quantization errors, as we will see later. The example left below shows the Floyd Steinberg method, while the one on the bottom right shows dithering with a fixed pattern. Now let's take a closer look in order to understand how this really works. The main idea of dithering is to replace each pixel value with pattern of dots. And the size, the density and the pattern of these dots correspond to the number of colors that we want to approximate. So for example, the darker pixel value would be represented by a higher dot density, while a lighter pixel would be represented by a few dots only. You can see the five patterns for a 2 times 2 dithering here in the slide. And it's important to understand that we still use just black and white, but we increase the number of perceived colors by the human visual system because we use different densities. The algorithm for the order tittering works as follows. We iterate over all input pixels and compute the corresponding location of the pixel in a ditter matrix, which is of size n times n. And in other words, this just means that we divide the input image into blocks matching the resolution of the ditter matrix. Then we check if our pixel value is greater than the value in the ditter matrix, and if so, we put a 1 into the output, otherwise a 0. So if you inspect the example of this 4 times 4 ditter matrix, then you can actually see that the values are very much distributed. And the reason for that is that we want to fill more dots the larger the input value is. An improved dithering algorithm is the Floyd Steinberg dithering, which distributes quantization errors to neighboring pixels. And this creates a smoother and more visually appealing result. As you can see in the algorithm sketch, the idea is to compute the error of the mapping from the pixel value to the pattern and distribute the error to the surrounding pixels with 7 out of 16 amounts going to the pixel on the right, 5 of 16 amounts going to the pixel below, and so on and so forth. The result of this algorithm can be seen on the next slide, where we use 256 colors for the original image on the left and only 4 colors for the image on the right, which is a remarkably good approximation under consideration of this compromise. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching.